Greetings. This is another episode of the Mystical Voyager podcast, and this is Mystical Voyager. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and we're going to do something a little bit different today and focus on the topic of immunity. Of course, we're hearing a lot in the media, seeing a lot of information, a lot of fear flowing around us all about the coronavirus and how dangerous it is, and it's a potential pandemic spreading across the globe. So we wanted to have a short and fun meditation and uh, some advice from some healing beings. That's right, some entities that are discarnate. These are beings, not the body. These are some healing masters. And we're going to just see what they have to say. I have no idea what's going to come up. But first, we're going to work with a healing master, and her name is Melanie, and she was a doctor, unusual uh, in that she was a female doctor in France in the 1700s, and she is one of the healing beings I work with. And so first, we're going to see what she has to say. So give me a moment, and uh, let me see what information comes up from Melanie. So Melanie's style of communication is very uh, abrupt and could almost seem uh, terse and rude. She doesn't mess around. She has no time for fools. She's very direct and she doesn't take kindly to people mm, not taking their own health seriously. So what she is transmitting is that posture is important, holding yourself straight and high and in what we may perceive as a proud stance. So it is important to have a strong, tall, straight posture. Of course, hydration and proper diet, vegetables, she does mention specifically asparagus. Now, of course, that was something available in France. She might not be as familiar with all the vegetables we have uh, now globally. She believes in breathing fresh country air. She believes in walking, walking as much as possible. And in that attitude of pride, she is very adamant about not taking on the attitude, the posture of a victim. Very important in her mind as a healer, as a doctor. And she doesn't see the coronavirus as any different than any of the other things that we might call plagues or um, historic pandemics and she points out there's always people that survive and there's always people that don't and it's the same type of people that make it through it's an inner strength and it's a uh, common sense no nonsense attitude to taking care of yourself so that's the transmission from Melanie next we're going to move on to another healing master I've worked with for many years his name is Mufon and he's from Bhutan. Mufan is friendly, jolly. He's like one of those happy Buddhas you would see. Wonderful personality. And from the ancient, ancient culture of Bhutan, he lived maybe about a thousand years ago. And he was a master meditator, metaphysician, and a monk. And he lived in a very remote mountain area. So he is more one to work with energies. And give me a moment and let's just see what he has to tell us. So not surprisingly, he does encourage us to smile and to be happy. And he shows that very gesture emanating a powerful force from the inside out, showing a ripple effect from an inner core, creating a, a positive 
energy, a positive shield around us. Um, it's a warm, fiery energy just triggered by the smiling, the laughing, the positivity that uh, pushes things away, pushes undesirable elements away from us from the inside out. And so let's take a moment and tune into that energy, tune into what Mufan's saying. And I want you to literally sit for a moment and smile, even laugh. And let's take a moment and just smile and be jolly and see if we can notice this energy he's describing. It emanates from the core, from the deepest part of our torso, and it spreads out from the inside out, almost like an aura or a mandala. See what you notice. Let's do this for a moment. Wow, that's very pleasant. And I see it uh, as an orange color in myself, an orange-yellow ripples, uh, layers and layers, almost like vibrating rings of a tree, but more in a oval or oblong shape emanating from the inside out. And let's just take one more moment, big smile, and let's feel that. And it's fun because you feel so silly doing it. It does make you want to laugh which is exactly the point. Now, when I work with Mufan, he usually uses all these different healing energies. This is the first time uh, we've communicated about something like this. It's pretty funny. So let's see what else Mufan has to say. He is an advocate, uh, not surprisingly, of simple monk food. A few different food elements in a bowl. You know, maybe you have some mung beans and rice or some lentils and noodles. He is not um, an advocate of this modern diet we have, which is uh, many different complicated processed foods in one bowl, every different meal. Uh, He doesn't like so many meals a day. I know some people believe in eating five, six small meals a day. He does not like that. You know, three max, but two he prefers. And he likes food in a bowl Whole foods, simple foods, not too overly seasoned, not too complicated, not too spicy. Now, as someone who lived in a monastery in the Himalayas, not surprising at all that that would be his stance. But he's adamant that the human body just doesn't need so much complication. It likes simplicity. It likes basics. And he thinks we're all a little bit confused with always chasing after all these different types of nutrients and different types of food and being so diverse with our diets. He actually thinks that is a disservice to our body. Again, it's the word that comes up complicated. It's just too complicated. And of course, he thinks processed foods are absolutely... um, You know, he doesn't believe in evil. He doesn't believe in the devil. But boy, processed foods are are against nature. They're against the law of nature. They're against the the will of um, the way the world flows and functions. It's really, uh, really interesting. He does have some strong feelings. But I keep seeing uh, mung beans and rice in a bowl with a little bit of vegetables on the side, maybe some pickled vegetables and a simple tea. And he thinks we we are a bit um, distracted by trying to find all these special health foods. He actually thinks it's weakening our immunity when a simple hot meal approached with mindfulness would do so much more, according to him. And actually having the same diet, the same meals day after day, he finds it restful and settling to the body and less of a distraction. And again, the word complication always comes up with him. So that's really interesting. And it's certainly not the way I eat, to be honest, but um, I'm going to be meditating on that. And why don't we take a moment to meditate on diet and just see what comes intuitively to each one of us since we all have our own individual needs. So let's take a moment and have a deep breath and go into that space. Oh, 
All right, excellent. Let's just see what else uh, Mufon wants to share with us. Now he's showing me a simple thing we can do on ourselves or on each other, and you can even just do this by visualization. But, you know, passing the hands through your aura, cleaning it out, brushing it off, that very simple gesture of brushing, combing through the aura, just cleaning it. Uh, do it daily and keep it fresh, keep it revitalized, just brush things out. Don't let it get stale and old and stuck. He's showing me that the stale, old, stuck energy, it really contributes to illness. You can do it on each other. You can do it on yourself. Brushing your hands through your aura. If you can't reach some places, visualize. And let me see what else he's wanting us to know. Along with that, imagining sort of a vortex or a tornado of energy swirling around us from top to bottom, bottom to top, really just keeping things clear. He emphasizes again, don't let things get stuck in the aura. It's normal for things to pass through, come and go. Don't let them get stuck. Brush it and swirl it and make a little tornado and do it every day. So we'll leave off with Mufon, and we're going to head on to the next healing master, and this is Blue Eagle. Blue Eagle's a female Native American healer who lived hmm, maybe about 200 years ago in the mid and southern United States. She and her tribe did uh, migrate, which was very typical between multiple locations, she did often live in what could be described as a teepee-like structure, and her specialty as a healing woman was actually using various smokes of different burning herbs. She would fill up this teepee structure with things like sage and different grasses and flowers and saps and so forth, and the smoke was very specific, very targeted in what it would heal and how it would heal. And that was what uh, her healing modality was and what she was known for. And she's letting me know that's pretty much lost, that um, very specific art she had. She didn't really have people ingest a lot necessarily. She used smoke and she used it to clean out their aura. So let me see what she has to say. So not surprisingly, she does say you can use sage, but um, she doesn't really want to get into it. She considers us very, very ignorant in herb usage, how to burn them, and it's, it's more complicated than just burning an herb. But if you really want to cleanse yourself, put yourself in a small room like a bathroom or a shower or a closet and really smoke it out because that's what she would do. I mean, she would smoke it out to the point where you could barely see through the air, very dense, very smoky. So if you're attracted to sage or Palo Santo or frankincense or myrrh, of course, those are from different parts of the planet. Uh, don't be stingy about it. Really make it smoky and sit with it until you feel it activating. So let me see what else she says. She's emphasizing draining tension from the spinal column. So sitting cross-legged on the floor, and this is a variation on grounding, but it's, um, it's like taking the tension from the base of the neck to the tailbone and letting it seep into the earth pulling out tension through the spinal cord. And this is a healing method I've personally never used, so this is new to me. And let's see what else she says. She's also showing, this is really interesting, grounding out and draining the tension in all the bones. She's specifically showing me the large bones of the upper arm. It's really interesting. She's showing me a density that builds up in the bones as um, being problematic making you more susceptible, more vulnerable. She says in our um, society, our culture, we rarely think about what builds up in the bones. You know, we talk about the aura, the blood, the muscles, 
but she's real serious about the bones. Because they're so dense, they hold on to very dense energy and act as a, a magnet or a weight. So she's encouraging all of us to connect with the earth, uh, drain off all the tension in the bones. Also, of course, connect with the earth with the soles of the feet. <clears throat> She's assuming we know how important this is. And so that's very valuable. So let's take a moment and meditate on this information and, and see what we personally feel is relevant to us. She's also emphasizing that the palms of the hand are very similar to the soles of the feet and we should actually lay the palms of our hand on the ground and this is something I honestly don't think about much I think a lot about my hand chakras but I hadn't thought about neutralizing them by connecting them to the earth so that's something I'm really looking forward to doing in fact if any of you want to do it right now if you're in a position to do that with uh, the soles of your feet you can connect to the earth and also try with the palms of your hand and feel the hand chakra is able to connect and drain into the earth. And it's just like an electrical circuit. It's grounding it so that there's not all this frenetic, um, almost electrical energy flying around. Let's see what else she says. You can drink sage tea. That's helpful. She's reminding us all, of course, it's a mindset. Being sick is so much a mindset. Do not fall into the sick mindset. Be flexible. In the same way that she was a traveler, a migrator, be flexible. Travel, migrate, leave a situation is what she's saying. Move. Do not be stuck. Do not make yourself stuck. Be agile. Be nimble. She doesn't mean literally you've got to go to a different country. That's not it at all. It's a mindset. It's um, it's okay to avoid that person at the office. It's okay to not go to that function if you don't feel that it's right for you. Be nimble, move, be flexible, travel if you need to. Uh, notice anger within yourself, within your mind, body, emotions. Anger will create holes that allow disease in. Connect with your spiritual power. Connect with your spiritual path. Uh, stay connected to whatever your spiritual practice is. She doesn't really care what it is. She's just saying don't forget about it. And stay connected to it. Just be smart, be practical, be pragmatic. Yeah, a lot of it is just just be be smart about what you're doing. Listen to your instincts. And while it's healthy to stay connected to friends and family, embrace your independence, embrace your aspect as a lone wolf, make your own decisions, don't go along with the herd, don't believe what everybody else is believing, be in your own space time, be in your own space and time, be independent. We'll take a moment to meditate on what Blue Eagle has shared with us. And the last healing master I'm going to meet with is Miguel. Miguel is interesting because when I first uh, met him, and I, these are non-physical entities, so I met him in meditation and I asked him who he was and what he did. And he's a psychic surgeon, but uh, he's a little bit crafty. He didn't give me very direct answers. And mind you, those of you that know about spirits uh, know that you don't just let them in to your body or to your system, and that is never what I do. I do have safe communication with entities. There are some entities that come into my hand chakras to do healing work, but they never go into my body, into my head, 
into my spirit. Um, and Miguel was never, t- to my understanding, in a human body. He was not incarnated here. And when I pressed him further, he, he's a bit trickstery. And he said he was also Archangel Michael, but I honestly don't really know. Um, but he is very effective at doing <clears throat> more, I'd almost call it physical um, adjustments, psychic surgeries. So the uh, the results speak for themselves, and that's why I have continued to communicate with Miguel. And so he's got a kind of a bold personality, but uh, again, a bit of a, a trickster personality. But let's see what he has to say about boosting our immunity, protecting ourselves from things like coronavirus and all illnesses in general. So Miguel encourages all of you to create bonds, communications, relationships with your own healing masters. Now, I may do an an audio about how to do this, a meditation how to do this, but he has a good point. He's not everybody's healing master. He works with some people. And so instead of giving advice about specifics, what he prefers to do is to encourage all of you listeners to go through a process of making a relationship with your own healing masters. Now, there are so many ways to do this. And of course, there's many audios, books, courses, so forth out there. Uh, Perhaps I'll, I'll create something, but it's very easy to find those resources. So that is his advice. In fact, why don't we take a few moments now and see what comes to you. I don't want you to try to go through the whole process of building a relationship with a healing master in this moment, but I just want you to be open to any intuitive information regarding this that comes your way. What Miguel is sharing with me is he's a big fan of structural integrity. That means... He likes the bones and spine aligned. He likes muscles functioning. He's a physical focused guy. He wants you to, if you need chiropractic, um, those types of things, get it. Uh, Fix your bones, fix your muscles. He likes things in order and functioning the best they can. And... um, Of course, this builds immunity and creates greater wellness. So those are the four healing masters giving their advice towards boosting your immunity, protecting you from coronavirus. Take this for what it's worth. Use your intuition if anything applies to you. You'll see these are somewhat atypical recommendations, but that's how the spirit realm works. Uh, they they don't follow trends and they don't go with fads. They have their own perspective. So thank you so much for joining me here on the Mystical Voyager podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe or follow, whatever is appropriate if you find this helpful. And have a wonderful rest of your day and wishing you the best of health, happiness, and prosperity.